Hello, welcome to US News. In this new release today, I will take you to the true story of St. Patrick's Day. The true story of St. Patrick's Day. When you think of St. Patrick's, you probably think of green beer, beaded pendants that say kiss me. I'm Irish and everyone is talking suddenly about what earn cues they feel. All of that is great, but what do you know about Patrick's origins and the party? St. Patrick, about St. Patrick, as you prefer, is considered the patron saint of Ireland, but in fact Nazar Benevent Bernay, a small town in England from the time of the Romans. At the moment that town does not exist, but was located somewhere of the region of Northamptonshire. Indeed, St. Patrick was not Irish. And since we are, his name was not Patricio, but Mawensukat. It seems that he himself decided to be known as Patrick. In fact, throughout their life they were known to him by several different names like Magonus, Succedus, and Cotherthiacus. His father, Calpurnius, was a deacon of the early Christian church, but Patrick was not exactly a believer. His encounter with faith and his conversion to Christianity did not arrive until a group of Irish pirates kidnapped him at the age of 16, and spent the next six years as a slave tending sheep flocks. While captive in the north of Ireland, Patrick learned the language and customs of the Irish. Finally, he managed to escape from his captors to return to England, but on the way he was arrested again. This time the French. It was during his capture France where he was impregnated with the Catholic monastic culture. When he was released and traveled back home, he continued his religious studies. At some point, Patrick claimed to have had a vision in which God asked him to bring Christianity to the Irish people, at that time most of the Irish were pagan and followed Druidic beliefs. Neither short nor lazy. Patricio returned to the same place where he had been enslaved to carry the word of God. Needless to say, when he arrived, neither he nor his word was welcome. In fact, he had to leave and decided to start with something less ambitious. He began to preach in a group of islands of the coast and little by little it was done with a group of followers. From there he returned to Ireland with more force and he did not stop preaching the word on the island. It is said that during his life he baptized thousands of people, some sources speak of more than 100,000. He also ordained new priests and nuns, managed to convert the sons of the island's kings, and helped to build 300 churches. The legend also says that Patricio expelled all the snakes of Ireland. It sounds good, but in reality there were never any snakes in Ireland in the first place. What is probably responsible is another kind of plague, the clover. According to the myth, the small three-leafed plant that today is omnipresent in the celebrations of St. Patrick's Day is because the saint used it to explain the concept of the Holy Trinity. The Irish worshipped three deities and held the number three very high so Patrick thought using the clover symbol was a good idea. At present, Patricius is known as Saint Patrick, but in reality there is no saint technically speaking. The Catholic Church has not canonized it, although it is widely venerated in many places. If he is not a royal saint, why is he commemorated on March 17? Where did the green color come from? Why do we think that an individual who was neither Irish nor expelled the snakes from the island is the symbol of Ireland? St. Patrick's Day began as a religious celebration sometime in the 17th century, and began to be celebrated precisely to commemorate the arrival of Christianity in Ireland. The date was known as Feast Day and was celebrated on March 17 because that is the day Patricius died. March 17, 461. In the early 18th century, Irish emigrants brought the feast to the American colonies. It is there that feast day began to become the day that claims the Irish heritage and culture that it is today. As more Irish crossed the Atlantic, 
the holiday was gaining popularity. He did it so fast that the first parade of St. Patrick's Day dates back to Boston in 1737. In the 19th century, the United States received a massive influx of Irish immigrants fleeing a massive famine on the island. This alluvium transformed the party into something much bigger in what the rest of Americans wanted to take part, were Irish or not. In 1903, Feast Day became a national holiday in Ireland and began to be known as St. Patrick's Day. It also began in many more countries outside the orbit of Ireland or the United States like Canada, Argentina, Australia, Switzerland or Russia. Even celebrated in some. Many thanks for watching our channel video. If you see or click the subscribe button and share to support yourself offline. Thank you and see you in the next newsletter. Many thanks for watching our channel video. If you see or click the subscribe button and share to support the channel offline. Thank you and see you in the next newsletter. Please subscribe to the channel to receive the latest daily news.